Welcome to LED Coding Solutions, pioneers in the art of wood refinishing. Um, I'm going to go to steps how to apply the oil. Before we apply the oil to the wood surface, the last cut of sanding, it should be 120 grit paper. Once the floor is sanded 120 grit, we're going to go ahead and vacuum the floor and we're going to start the application of the oil. After floor is sanded, vacuumed, and ready to put the oil on. If you want deeper color, you can water pop it. But after you water pop it, you have to make sure that the floor is completely dry prior to put the oil. So most likely you should use a moisture meter prior and after the water popping. Okay, um, let's pretend this is a room and there is a studio apartment and we have no more space. What I'll do, I put a tape, almost quarter of the room. I will move my furniture, my tools, everything to this side. And I put the tape right on the connection between two pieces of wood. And I will finish this part first. I will cure it. Then I will remove the paper this way and I will just do that spot right after. So in the same day, you can do this entire place half and half because you have the ability to instantly cure it. Now, the best way to do this finish, you want to spread the oil. I learned the easiest way to roll the oil on the floor, but not to make a mess. I will do the perimeter first. So when I knee on it and start working on a perimeter, I don't get dirty. So I will do the perimeter first and then I will roll the entire place. So we will start. To do the perimeter first, I will do just the half of the roller, so there's not a lot of work for the hand work. Basically, here we go. And I will have a couple guys work on this now. That's it. All we're doing, working it in to absorb into the wood. As you see, there's a lot of extra oil right now on the perimeter, but it's okay because I'm not done yet. I want to spread the oil now completely and then I will clean up all the access. And I'm going to buff this thing. You could do this by yourself or you could have another help because this, will, this oil will never dry. Open time is forever. Unlike oxidative oils, this oil got a photo initiator. Once you hit the light, then it will dry. So you will have your time to cut all the corners and applicating the oil. Go ahead. So he's working to absorb the oil into the wood. So you're going back and forth and back and forth. Okay, so basically he went a couple times back and forth. Most of the oil absorbed into the wood, but you could see I have a lot of little particles, extra oil sticking out there. Don't worry about this now. We will take care of that later on. So I want to continue rolling and going back. It's very important that you have enough oil. You want to see some extra oil, that means you have enough oil. If you want to walk on it, make sure you want to put, you know, more sterile oil into the wood. You could take a sandals, you could grind under it, make it nice flat surface. You could wear them and you can walk on it. And, uh, and it was very easy to not to leave a footprint. So while you have those sandals on, you can turn around any direction you want. Okay, next step, after applicating the oil first time to the wood floor, so we have a lot of extra oil here and uh, we want to take the extra off. Okay. You notice that we use a red pad to applicate it. Once we're done applicating with the red pad, we will go ahead and wipe all the access with the white pad or carpet pad. What will be the difference? If there is a lot of oil, I will go ahead and use a carpet. It will absorb much more and it will remove it. But if it's not too much oil, I can go ahead and use the white pad. So I have a feeling that we have a lot of oil over here. So I could go ahead and use the carpet to remove the access. See how beautiful Cerus effect is coming? I took most of the access off from the middle, but if you see on the perimeter where the buffer cannot reach, I still have some access oil. 
What I want to do, I want to remove it with the towel. Pull the access off, and then just hit the little white pad because that's what I'm going to finish everything eventually. So here I go. I remove all the access. And I hit it with the white pad. Basically, when I go with the hand, it almost no oil in my fingers. Very little if you see it, look. That's the amount it's gonna be. Now, this connection with the tape, I didn't wanna force the buffer on it because I don't want the oil to go under the tape. I wanna have a clean connection here. So this part, I will do it by hand with the red part. Put it on, we wipe the access off. Same way, we take the, clean it up with the access, and then we put it with the white pad. Okay, so I just rub the oil. I have a lot of access white. I wipe it off. See? Color's almost same. And then I will hit the white pad. So I will have everything even. Now, everywhere evenly the oil is removed, but I have some footprints and I have some jumped oil. So what I wanna do, I wanna use a auric buffer just to make everything even. I can walk all the way end of the room, start from here, go back. All these footprints, all these little extra drips, it will disappear. Gotta make sure that you break all those footprints you have. You see all these lines, everything is gonna disappear. You see that footprint there? It's gonna disappear. You have some sanding marks. So, you see how easy I got it even color distributed. Now I'm ready to cure. So I will have my light ready and uh, I will gradually dry and walk on it. So I'm, I'm ready with the LED light. Uh, in the light box, you will have a UV blocker glasses. I, I use this all the time just for accidentally, if I put the light to my eyes, it's a very strong light. I don't wanna hurt myself. So that's why I will suggest you always wear the glasses. You hold the light at an angle a little bit. So this way I'm feathering the oil in the front. And you go 50% of the light by each roll when I move up. Like 50%, I move up. One, back, forth. Move up, back, forth. Move up, back, forth. Move up, back, forth. So while you're walking, try to slide your foot. If it holds, that means it's not dry. So you know either you're going too fast, you can slow down a little bit. But basically, it will take a few minutes, I will be finished with this room. Back and forth, each line. 50% up, 50% up, 50% up. That's it. So basically I have all my tools because there was no room in the, in the space. I packed, parked all my tools in this side of the room and I have a tape on it and a paper. So I'm gonna remove this paper this way to do that part and then we'll be done. So this way it's very convenient that if you don't have a space, you can use it this way and, and it's done. So, now I'm gonna remove the tape and we're gonna put a new tape right here. This is extremely expensive look. People, people they gotta go water. 
They, they have to do a watercolor. They have to sand it again. They call it water sarusing. And when you're putting a watercolor, you can't connect because when you end of the room and then that dries, you are overlapping. So this oil gives you all the open time. You have no issue of the... So before, before they put the tape, this is very important. You see where I stopped? I stopped right on the crack of this side. So I didn't pass to this piece. I stopped right here. Now I'm gonna put my tape on this side. So what I do first, first I put a piece of tape right on the, uh, the connection. Then I will put a paper over it and tape it again. I don't wanna tape the paper and the first tape together first. At this point, I covered this new floor so I don't damage it. I'm gonna move all the tools this way and park this way. We're gonna applicate the oil same way from the far wall to the end. Okay, if I had more materials, tools or furniture, I would have taped a couple more paper here so I don't damage the floor or actually this floor is finished. You can put your furniture from that side back onto the place because this is done. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and put same way from the far wall to my connection. And it's very important if you notice it, how much oil I wiped. That's why I said, let's wipe everything so we have the same look. If you leave some oil, you will not get the same color when you connect with each other. Now, if you notice it, he's doing the corners first again, so he doesn't get no mess. You have a lot of oil. You don't wanna put the oil in the area that you're gonna go in and out with the cord, so I will leave this end, but what I will do, I will thoroughly rub on, on the perimeter so I will make it to go in because my buffer not gonna be able to work on the perimeter. So I'm doing it by hand, trying to roll it, rub it in to absorb into the wood. Once the perimeter hand rubbed, I'm gonna go ahead and roll rest of the floor and I'm gonna buff it in. There is not such a big science in this. All you're doing, spreading the oil fastest way you can. Some people will use different technique. Bottom line is that I'm spreading the oil and wiping the oil out and then drying. So if the buffing pad is still fairly new, because it was only 300, 200 square feet, I can go ahead and use the same pad. But if the pad, when you buff it, it starts sticking, that means it's overworked, you should change it. Just because he's wearing the sandals, he can walk on the oil. Okay. Basically, we applicate the oil, and if you notice it, I didn't stop the buffer middle of the room. I stopped the buffer on the perimeter, where it's less visible from the light coming into the room, or you know, there is a, if there is an extra oil there, it will show the buffer mark. So I parked the buffer on the perimeter. As you see, he's wearing the sandals, and he can move inside instead of just staying outside to work. He can move in, he can turn around because he might have a detailed work to do. So it doesn't matter, as long as he's wearing the sandals, he can walk freely throughout the place. So this last edge connection to the, to the tape, I didn't want to bring the buffer close because I don't want to disturb the tape and the color goes through and touches the newly finished floor. That's why I do that always by hand. To make this connection seamless, I didn't want to use the buffer to connect the old floor to the new floor because it might force it, the tape, with the buffer and the color will go under it. So that's why I do it by hand to, do, to get this seamless connection. So basically same steps, again, it's very important you follow the same steps. We use the red pad to applicate the oil and we have a choice again white pad or carpet to clean the access. If I use a, if I don't use the same sequence, these colors will be different. After using the red pad, applicating the oil, now I'm gonna use white pad or a carpet to remove the access. 
Just because I used carpet on this side, I have to use the carpet here to leave same amount of oil on the surface to have a seamless connection. So we have the carpet on to remove the excess oil. How I will remove the excess oil? Same way. I will go all the way to the far wall and gradually will come back and come out. Okay. As you see, again, he didn't stop in the middle of the room. He stopped in a perimeter. So this way, if any problem, it will not be any showing something right middle of the room. So after I remove excess oil, I'm gonna walk in there and clean up the perimeter oil because my buffer couldn't touch the perimeter. Make sure during perimeter cleaning, when your rag gets a lot of oil, gets wet, change your rag because you're actually leaving a lot of oil and it's not gonna match all the perimeter together in the same spread rate of the oil. Now all the perimeter is clean, extra oil is cleaned up. I'm gonna go back into Oreg buffer just to make everything even. Again, same sequence. We start from further wall by cleaning it and we come out and walk out from the room. So now we cleaned it, we, we cleaned up extra oil, we buffed it with the Oreg, we're ready to dry. I don't want to dry this unless I remove the tape, just in case if any extra oil is under the tape, so I can clean it before I dry it. I want to remove the tape first. It looks perfect, so I can go ahead and dry it. Look at how beautiful transformation, right? From that ugly floor. This was the cheapest wood floor you could have bought. Basically, I dried both sides, I connected, you don't see no connection. The, this, this project is finished. So for extra protection, I can go ahead and put a clear coat over this, one more. If this is in a bedroom, I don't even have to do that. But at the same time, if the customer expectation was more whiter than this, it's not the end of it. I can go ahead and put a tape or just roll another coat of color. I could get more whiter. So what I want to do, I want to put a tape in just a little spot. I want to put quickly one more coat to could see how it's going to change the color if I put another coat over it. This time, instead of carpet, I'm going to use a white pad. This way I can leave a little bit more extra white oil because customer wanted it more whiter than the, the finish we just did. So I'm gonna wipe it with the white pad. This, this spread rate is a little bit more. Same action. Again, I'm gonna go with the perimeter, take the access off with the rag and hit it with the white pad because I'm gonna finish everything with the white pad. So my spread rate should be the white pad. After applicating the extra oil, after, uh, extra white oil. Now I'm going to remove the tape, make sure that connection is clean, and then I'm going to dry it. So scissors are going to dry it with a different light. It's a, it's a longer light. So just the same technique, slowly going from the wet floor to the end. Now you can see between one time application the color oil and two time application. If I want even more white, I can go third time. I can go one more coat application. Back it, back it. Okay, so basically this is it. 